As much of our current high consumption of energy in the form of goods and services does not lead to greater well-being. It is as supportive, localised communities that we can continue to thrive. <coughs> and we believe the Council can help facilitate and provide visibility to this. We believe our local government has to prioritise fulfilling the basic needs of its communities. Clean air, water, food and shelter. People cannot thrive and participate in communal activities Without clean water, food and shelter, people cannot thrive and participate in communal activities and local trade. Without a healthy biodiversity, there is no basis for humans to flourish. DCC needs to plan for unexpected events and shortfalls. We are particularly worried about food security and energy as we live with increased weather instability affecting both food production and distribution. We need to think local. <coughs> we fully support a refresh of DCC strategies that enable our natural and social habitats to thrive with less energy, less resources and much greater well-being for all. These strategies cannot be implemented soon enough. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Are you happy to take questions? Yes. I have a question to start off with. Um, you're obviously very aware of the paper coming out. I just wonder what sort of engagement would you like to see um, from Council to the community, including SCAN? Uh, kia ora. My name's John Hogue. To answer that question, I suppose, Acknowledging that there are a lot of activities going on in the community which are working towards groups of people walk, working towards a, a more sustainable and resilient future. I suppose one of the things that intrigues us is we is the visibility of this. Do people know about the activities that are taking place in the community and how can we raise the visibility? Is there engagement from the council with local community groups? Um, are local community groups themselves aware of what the other groups are doing? So it's these silos. So to get back to your question, Sophie, I think it's about engagement. I think it's about visibility. And I think visibility probably depends upon some kind of site, hub, where people can acknowledge that this is what exists here, we can get connected here, we can share information here, we can be educated, but it seems to me if sustainability and resilience are key issues for the future of the community, it needs to be visibly higher and seen. Um, we know there are people doing great stuff, and we know it's not joined up. I think the challenge is to get some of this stuff joined up and it seems to me the council, if we're going to support the council and the work it's doing, that's where there is some kind of centre where you could unfold that. So that's one suggestion that we would have. Sue, you want to add to that? It's just really important because the next few years there'll be so many changes and there'll be lots of events happening that are out of our control and it would be really great to see that the council, that our council has got strategies in place that take care of these, of, of weather events, of <coughs> lack of, of food, of, of, of water, of energy, etc. And, and it's, the main thing is to not think that council has to do it all and the communities don't have to think that they have to do it all. We <coughs> all work together. And I think one of the other things I'd like to encourage the council to think about is giving the employees of the council who are working in these various components, whether it be the strategic refresh, whether it be the portrait of the, the city portrait, whether it be the zero carbon, giving those employees the mandate to engage with these groups of people and these community groups. And if that's going to happen, that raises visibility. 
and at the same time having a place where that is seen to happen. Because at the moment it sort of flies around, people hear about it, but we're not quite really sure if it's actually real. Um, raising visibility, we were just talking before the meeting about George Street, um, the rain garden in George Street. Now, that's a wonderful initiative. How many people know about that? That's the kind of example that needs to be shared and profiled and given visibility because in effect it's about sustainability. So that's the kind of theme that we wanted to, to bring to the table today. We're not asking you to spend a lot of money. We're actually asking you to free up some people probably to be available to engage with the community in the work that they're doing in the council and the community groups are, who are passionate about, whether it's the community gardens, um, whether it's the people who are involved in biodiversity, whether it's the people revegetating the peninsula. I mean, they probably work in isolation and they get recognition for it, but it's actually showing that's part of a bigger picture. Thank you. We have two other councillors with questions. Councillor O'Malley, then Councillor Gilbert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for coming today. Um, we obviously have the carbon neutral 2030 target and a plan developing to go to that, but we don't, as far as I can really see, they have a full climate adaptation plan in a coordinated manner. And what I'm hearing you saying sounds almost like you are starting to head in that direction of something we'd like. So would you like that? And then the second one is um, to give the mandate to staff to interact with the community would then also, I think, require then that we'd have to have a mechanism of understanding that that had actually happened. Do you have an idea of being able to tell us back whether or not you've had the right interaction with the council? Um, sorry. I think the people we've spoken to who work in the council with various portfolios, I'm blown away with how good they are and how passionate they are about the work they're doing. But I don't think that's well known and it's probably not joined up. So does that answer your question, Council? I think it does, and as much as I think you just answered it then, so you're actually looking maybe for a higher profile of the activities and, and a demonstration and that it's actually taught each, each part is talking to the other part. I think the first meeting I went to involved two people who have a reasonably high profile and who are employed by the Council in various portfolios, and we had a meeting about food resilience, I think it mm. was, and I was blown away by the fact that these two people had never met. I knew them both, but we actually had to introduce them. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Gilbert and Councillor Walker. Thank you. Uh, kind of continuing on on much the same vein, um, the information hub you, you talk about and getting out and getting it more uh, out there and exposed and, and things. The roles of people you're talking about or the position you're talking about, is, is your imagination that it would be sort of a cloistered position that goes out every now and then? Or is this, are we talking about something as a pure example being, for example, part of the eyesight where people just walk in and talk to? Or what, what sort of thing did you have in mind? It could be well, uh, you know, besides the eyesight, somewhere that's very accessible. Someone there who, who's got a lot of the, the knowledge and the addresses and the, um, just the finger on the pulse, really. I suppose that would then be the person who would, or the, or the people who would have to, people would have to report to them if, there's, if things change or whatever, you know, it would have to be coordinated somehow. I, th I think it's about accessibility in the first place, visibility, and then out of that would grow some energy that this is a place you can go. Now, there are some obviously technical questions about who's there and when they're there and so on, but I think if the principle is something the council values, then I think that could be worked through. I mean, where the eyesight is in around that area seems to me a good example, because then it immediately connects it to the council and the community um, so we haven't got any specific detail about the physical side of it, but it's the principle we've explored and the more we talk about it, the more we think that's what's needed. So some negotiation with the council and all other groups would need to take place. 
Thank you. And my last question is around food security. You mentioned about um, both it being both food production as well as distribution. Let's work on the assumption that all arable land that is currently around is, is remains untouched, good to use uh, for growing bits. The biggest problem at the moment is it seems trying to get people who actually want to take up those sorts of roles, that sort of lifestyle uh, of being at the whim of, of nature. Any suggestions as to how that then dovetails into food resilience as in if we can't get people to grow on the land, how do we go about that? Any ideas? If we could solve that, we would solve a lot of problems. Yeah. But I think it's got to hap that's got to happen on a national level, a regional level, and a local level. And I think that's about the visibility, visibility and profile discussion again. Find some champions. I mean, it's timing and it's finding champions, I think. But if there's a commitment from the community and the council to profile that, surprising who might come out of the woodwork. Um, it might require some unpopular conversations about where and when you can do stuff. But if the principles that we've described are ones you buy into, <coughs> then you know it requires some brave decisions about how you go about it. But giving it a profile in the first instance, I think, is something that I think is the council with the community could do in finding some champions. Early innovators, call them what you will. Yeah. Well, we we're running out of time. We have two councillors to um, ask questions. Councillor Walker, then Councillor Houlihan. Thank you. Um, I'll be fairly brief. Um, thanks, uh, Sue and John. Uh, Three-part question. So, um, and I think I know the answer, we'll ask it anyway. Um, you're obviously aware of uh, the Zero Carbon team with Jinty and the four others. Um, and you'll be aware of that the zero carbon work program that they're engaged in, uh, particularly the 2030 targets, et cetera, and the focus gaps. And assuming that's a yes to those first two, are those channels still open? Yes, very much so. So we are <clears throat> meeting, or we, we, we ask to get updates. They answer, they're very um, responsive. They say maybe just wait another few weeks and then I have more updates. It's not, you know, so we are in... in um. Yeah, they're, they're very keen. They're very keen. They want, to, they want to engage with somebody. So here's a group they can engage with who they know they're going to get banged around the head. Councillor Houlihan. Thank you. Um, it sounds to me like you're saying that we could benefit from a better marketing campaign around our you know, 2030 goals and around our um, carbon zero stuff and perhaps educational things. I've been saying this for quite a while, so if it is, I think it's a great idea. And and, and if so, what sort of ideas have you got around that? Like um, ambassadors, by the sound of it, you were saying, as in champions, sort of maybe some well-known people to, like I've been saying, to say buses are sexy again or something like that, you know, but that continual messaging around those things, is that something you think, is that what you're saying today? And we don't have to invent the wheel here. There's all these other places are doing this already. It's just a matter of getting the best ideas, adapting it to here, and going for it. Because I suppose you call it reframing in the, you know, the vernacular, the modern corporate vernacular. Let's reframe it so it looks like that, not like that. Because while we've got a 2030 goal, we're not going to achieve it if the city doesn't take it on and join us. And so to, to get people doing things, what, like, do you think sort of small, short educational videos of ideas of ways everyday people could do things to make a difference? Do you think that could be something we could consider? Or I, I, think, I think you'll have to strategise those things once you commit to yes. uh, that, that kind of thing. And I think timing's, timing is everything. So it may well be that there is a thing about buses at a particular time, or there is a thing about zero carbon, or there is a thing about regenerative farming, whatever it is. But I think somebody has to be nimble enough to work that stuff. Now, that, the community groups can't do that on their own. It, they, that needs to have the support of an engagement with the resource of the council. When you're walking about our city, do you um, get the f feeling and the messages now that we're a 2030 
um, city who's been ambitious with our goals for our carbon um, zero and that we, we are taking this very seriously. Do you get a feel of that when you're going around our city? I don't really. Um, there's, there's starts, there's lots of starts, but it's not a, it's not a, a, a big idea, you know. It's not the idea that by 2030 we actually have to reduce our emissions by half. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is the most important thing, okay? I mean, every time I walk past a skip, I go, oh, God. I mean, construction site, I go, oh, you know, there's obviously some wonderful stuff that could go on there about, you know, you walk past the skip and it's full of wonderful offcuts. You know, I, I'm, I've pulled stuff out that's, you know, six per twos in the old lingo, which were 15 feet long and not 15 feet long, about six feet long, wonderful bits of sticks of timber. I'm thinking, how can this go to waste? How can this... We, we should be able to do this better. So which buttons you push and when you put them, push them, important. But to answer your question, no, I don't get that impression. I'd like to. Thank you, um, Ms Novell and Mr Ho, for coming to the public forum. Really appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to apologies. We've got an apology from Megan Portakey for early departure. Um, we, so I will move that the committee accepts the apology from Megan Portakey. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Gilbert. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour? Anyone against? That is carried. Thank you. We will move on to the confirmation of agenda. So I will move that the committee confirms the agenda without additional alteration. May I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Mayhem. I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Anyone against? That is carried. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of the need to stand aside from decision making when a conflict arose between their role as an elected representative and any private or other external interests they may have. Are there any changes or updates? In that case I'll move that the committee notes the elector's members interest register attached as attachment A and confirms the proposed management plan for elected members interests. Interests may I have a seconder. Thank you Councillor Mayhem. All those in favour say aye. aye. Anyone against? That is carried. So we will move on to the confirmation of minutes. So I will move that the committee confirms the minutes of the strategy planning and engagement committee meeting held on the 13th of February 2023 as a correct record. May I have a seconder please? Councillor Gilbert, thank you. All those in favour? Anyone against? That is carried. All right, we should move on to part A, reports, actions and resolutions of the Strategy, Planning and Engagement Committee. Ms Jeanette Wikaira will speak to the report. Does anyone, any have, cool. Does anyone have any questions? In that case, I will move that the committee notes the completed actions from resolutions of the Strategy, Planning and Engagement Committee. I have a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Would anyone like to speak to the motion? If I'm going to put the motion, all those in favour say aye. Anyone against? That is carried. Number eight, the Strategy Planning and Engagement Committee Forward Work Programme. Ms Jeanette Wikaira will speak to the report. Happy to take questions. Thank you. We have a question from Councillor Gary. Um, Ms Bequire, can you just talk to the, it's the second last item, the Otago Boat Harbour Reserve Management Plan and Otago Harbour Reserve Management Plan. Um, it says the work is scheduled to commence in September. This work's been a long time coming. I was interested in the time frame for, to completion. I'll just hand that over to my colleague. Mr Pickman. Through the chair, so that the the schedule that we have laid out here is uh, was approved by the previous council, so it's just working through that those the program. So uh, the only one that's changed since that was agreed was the um, 
uh, the Logan Park management plan, which rose to the top as a request of council. But this is just basically what we would agree through council. So uh, I was interested in, in how long you expect the process to take from September. Uh, the, so in September there will be a notice of intent, and then two or three months consultation all up, and then a, um, the, the council will have a chance to consider that draft. So six to eight months. Councillor Gilbert. Thank you. Quick question on the uh, zero carbon 2030. <coughs> the development of a work program, I know we've got yet another update uh, coming. When is the completion scheduled for? When are we actually going to get the program, complete program? Do we have a date? Or is it just a moving kind of a... Sorry, there is a work program and so the, the work programme continues to be updated, which is what's being um, presented here. What you, I think maybe what you're asking about is the, um, the actual plan, yeah. And so that is due to come uh, in June, an update report. I'll have to check, I'll have to check with the um, so I did think it was coming in June. Yeah, OK. Councillor Houlihan. Thank you. Um, following on from that, when the Carbon Zero plan comes, will it include a comms and marketing strategy in there? Um, so as part of the development of the plan, the team has already done the community engagement. I think that's just closed recently, so that's been out widely um, across the across the community. Um, I'll have to check as to whether it will have an ongoing uh, engagement plan as part of the the general plan. Um, I'll, I'll just have to check up on that. That looks like the end of questions, so I will move that the committee notes the Strategy Planning and Engagement Committee forward work programme. Uh, Councillor Gary second. All those in favour? Anybody against? It is carried. Now we will move to the Strategic Refresh Update. Ms Vicaro and Ms Huko will speak to the report. We're happy to take questions. Councillor Gilbert. Thank you. Um, questions about, so we, can you tell me when the uh, great small city vision, when did that come in place? Roughly. No, they weren't there. Uh, my, from memory, that was m early on in Mayor Cull's term, I think, but without having that question in advance, I'm sorry, I can't give you an accurate um, answer. That's right, I'm, I'm sort of leading, I'm trying to do a, a Councillor O'Malley and lead to my, to my point. Um, so when we were, were updating the, um, the strategy approach, but the vision remains the same. Was any consideration given to changing the vision, updating the vision, checking with council as to whether that is still the vision that was wanted? Councillors are aware that we've had various conversations um, and workshops, and the direction we've had is that the vision wasn't up for grabs at this point, but ultimately if council wishes to revision the city, that's a decision they can take. Councillor Hurlham. Thank you. Um, do we have any figures on how many of our strategies are out of date and needing to be reviewed? There are a number of strategies to be reviewed. Um, in the wheel, 
I'd say about 80% of them are up, up for review currently, which is why there, there is a timeliness with this refresh program that's needed. Councillor Wiley, then Councillor, um, sorry, Cherry, Lucas. Um, thank you. Um, page 33, paragraph 24, um, that talks about the focus has been on analysing and refreshing the four strategies that are related to wellbeing, and it lists them. This has involved an in-depth audit of each strategy, analysing strengths and weaknesses in relation to wellbeing and identifying areas of improvement. Um, and I also look on page 32 under the wellbeing strategies. Uh, it talks about audit of existing wellbeing strategies as a key milestone completed, as well as wellbeing concepts drafted. Um, I'm just sort of actually a little bit confused as the Chair of Economic Development. I haven't seen any of that work come through, and I understand there's a workshop on March 17th. Um, can you expand on that? Sure. The um, wellbeing concepts were um, in their very draft form were shared to all of Council through the previous workshops, but the, there's no way that they've been um, adopted in any way. They're just concepts. Um, and the upcoming workshops is where we'll be able to flesh those out in more detail and to ask for specific feedback from councillors and um, ELT, as you mentioned, starting in March 17th. Yeah, May 17th. I'm, I'm, so what I'm taking from what I'm reading here is that there's already been the in-depth audit of each strategy, anal analysing strengths and weaknesses in relation to wellbeing and identifying areas of improvement. So are we going to wait till March 17th to see that or are we going to have a time before that to work through it and then workshop it? The yes, this, it starts in the workshop, but in terms of material to consider, and obviously there's no way that decisions can be made in a workshop. So it's really the start of the conversation is will will be uh, in those workshops. Um, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, it sort of does, but I'm, I just feel like I see key milestones are completed in the in the table on page thirty two. And it talks about order of existing wellbeing strategies, wellbeing concepts drafted. And um, as a chair of economic development and the economic development strategy here, I'm sort of frustrated that I haven't seen that already because that's quite a lot of work for us to try and workshop and the importance of it. And I just feel like as I'm reading this report, there's a lot of communication around what's been done, yet I guess I'm at a loss because I haven't seen seen that for the area that I cover. Thank you, and that's that's being noted. Um, the in terms of what we mean by that, it is following on from the Harrison and Gresham report, which was to uh, review each of the strategies in relation to Tiriti or Waitangi or Treaty of Waitangi, as well as sustainability using city portrait. So that desktop analysis um, has gone through all of the strategies, the, um, but there is a lot more work to be done. In terms of economic development strategy, um, uh, uh, the staff in that specific area, Enterprise Dineen, has also um, been reviewing the strategy alongside policy. But it's more of a, a stock take, as opposed to a, um, we've yet to go on the journey with you. Have the staff seen the audit of that yet? The word audit might be part of um, what kind of needs to be clarified here. We've used the word audit, but what we've done, is, as um, Gina has mentioned, is go through the strategy, find the areas that are not aligned with other strategies or with the vision or with sustainability and the treaty, which are our two strategic priorities and start to kind of map that out. Also map out um, across, uh, to, to try and work out from, from um, you know, high level statements all the way through to community outcomes, how those actually connect across a strategy. And what we've found is that there's lots of misalignment of what we say at this end to what we actually 
do at this end. And so what we've tried to do is just map out and kind of stock take and review each of the strategies to see how misaligned they are, how, you know, if we say we have, a, you know, sustainability and treaty are priorities of this council, what does the strategy actually say and do? And what are we doing out in the community with about that? So there will be a lot of things that we haven't, you know, that the team hasn't looked at or hasn't touched because it's outside of our, um, scope. our scope. But what we have done as part of what was initially set up to, as part of the Harrison Grierson plan, to, to go through each strategy, stock take, find the areas of where there's no alignment or, or not enough alignment, look at the treaty, look at sustainability, and kind of do a high level desktop analysis of what all that looks like across each of the strategies. Thank you, actually that was a good detail of explanation, so appreciate that. I then look at the fact of when do we really, or when does community really get a chance to have a voice in that? And it talks about, I'm, I'm trying to work out from the diagram, and I sort of see, same as with the, the workshop schedule for September, oh, so June 28th, well, 2017, the May to 28th of June, which I understand a council um, workshops. But when does the full community really take place? Because I've got TBC, TBC, TBC. Uh, firstly, community engagement is a really central part to this work program, but we acknowledge there's a lot of work to be done with council and and we need to um, be able to clarify some details with council before we start in community engagement. But ideally, we would love to be out in the community sort of July from July onwards. And um, we are also very mindful of the amount of community engagement that is ongoing right now, this half of the year. Um, it, it's quite a, a busy schedule and we, we just wanted to make sure that when we go out we have space and time and we're, we were also listening to the community and they, some community people feel over engaged and some feel under engaged and so we thought by July we should be able to come up with a plan that um, addresses those. Just um, wanted to mention one thing on um, uh, from what Gina has said. So one of the things we have been doing um, is understanding all the engagement that is happening in the organisation and trying to map that out. What engagement is ongoing? What is our strategic engagement? You know, we've just been talking about the um, future for the future development strategy yeah. engagement. There's been the zero carbon engagement. There's been South Dunedin engagement. There's been a lot of engagement across big, big pieces of work. Um, and what we've tried to do is, you know, some of that engagement like the future development strategy is um, is government uh, central government kind of you know has has that lens on it and so it has it has particular timelines that have to be achieved um, and so we're trying not to go out on top of each other basically and we're trying to map it out so that we're going you know we're starting conversations then some of that conversation can be carried on and picked up by the next group which can be carried on and picked up by the next group um, and that requires quite a lot of mapping. And so we do acknowledge that this the strategic refresh work does need to be, you know, does need to start engagement, but there's these other big conversations happening in the community at the moment that um, that means that by the time this, the strategic refresh work comes out, some of those conversations have already started and we can pick up where they left off. So it, it, I guess as teams we are kind of overlapping <coughs> our work and that's so that the, the community understands that it is all connected up. Um, these are big conversations for the community to be having with us and they are interconnected conversations of which the strategic refresh kind of wraps it all up, um, you know, at, at another level. And so we've, we're being mind, we're trying to be mindful as we can about these conversations that are, that are happening in the community. Councillor Lucas, Councillor Houlihan and Councillor Gary. Councillor Lucas. Thank you and um, following on from Councillor Wally, thank you for your questions which answered most of mine. Um, on number 27, where you talk on page 34, you talk about um, a summary overview of the wellbeing and city portrait work has been prepared and will be provided prior to the workshop programme. So 
I don't see when that fits in, and it obviously doesn't come into a forum like this. Uh, th this is um, some of the material that will uh, precede the workshop, so I uh, would say within the next week that will be with all of Council to consider. Bef it's just, it's more background material in, in, a, in more detail before we start the workshops. Okay, uh, thank you. And then um, on, the, on the top of page 33 you have that um, diagram with the, with the circles. I'm just, you've got a date there for July, but then I'm just wondering what the date and, and the process is, is following on from that. Uh, we we did leave that off because that is an area um, that we're specifically going to be teasing out in the workshops around how fast we can go um, and there are some considerations within that so once we have got a um, some feedback from council then we can start to get much more specific. Councillor Hurlihan. Thank you. Following on from Councillor Wiley's questions as well, as Chair of Aratui, I'm just going through this list and wonder, um, so with the audit of existing wellbeing strategies, the wellbeing research completed, um, the wellbeing concepts drafted, ongoing support for ORC wellbeing group, will that information come through to, to the Chair of Aratui at some point? It will come to all of Council and it is summarised in the wellbeing summary um, report. That, that is coming to you, yeah. Okay, Councillor Gary, then Councillor O'Malley. Um, thank you, Ms Suaku. Uh, and I note in item 31 on page 37 you speak to the matter of community engagement and it being essential in the August-September dates. So that's all good. Uh, but I was interested to know the methods that you will use to engage the community. I'm really interested in that and I'm sure they'll be varied, but um, it is important to understand that. Thank you, Councillor Gary. Um, yes, there will be um, a range of different methods. Um, the, as um, Ms Waikata said, that we've just got, we've been doing some analysis of all the engagement. We've learnt what's worked and what hasn't worked. So we're thinking, yes, um, social media, uh, website, face-to-face, -face, online. We've also been learning from other um, councils around the world. Um, and they've challenged us a lot around how they um, hosted engagement in Melbourne in particular, um, over in Nanaimo in Canada and over in Brussels. Um, and they found that with youth, um, online forums were still well attended. So we're a bit bummed out by that because we wanted to do mostly face to face. So a whole um, variety of um, mediums and methods. So I was particularly interested in the, thank you for that, um, the face to face and how you see that being um, rolled out. So what, what we have learned from our, um, from our other councils and also um, some of the, those councils who are internationally places, um, discrete intimate settings are still seem to be uh, ones that people seem to be drawn by rather than say big expo style. Um, so, and we also want really mindful of the cost of living and wanting to be pragmatic. And um, so, our idea around face to face is smaller groups um, and for us to do it more low key. And so, going to where people are. So, I should have said that um, geographic spread. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor O'Malley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks for the report. Um, my question sort of starts around timing, I guess, and, and delivery. Um, you said in point five it took eight years to develop the strategies that are that are ex currently existing. Um, some of those, actually most of the strategies have some sort of reporting in them, but we're not getting that reporting anymore. Is it true then that those strategies are, what, what's the status of those strategies that exist while we're doing the refresh? The strategies remain current. That is their status. So does their reporting also remain current? So when you've got our toy that you will meet with the artistic community every year and then we have the artistic community telling us we haven't met since 2017, is that, is that an aberration? Or, uh, not to you, but I mean, is that, is that part of it current? I guess I'm almost asking the Chief Executive at this point. We've said a number of times, councillors, that while this work is done, many, many of those things across all of the strategies <coughs> Uh, on hold, like the annual hui or the Aratoi hasn't has happened once I think in the last four years. Um, so some of those things were in abeyance well before the review, 
uh, and in fact were um, one of the reasons that we've triggered the review. I think the council realised there needed to be a review. So there are a whole, and the work we're doing on levels of service and more broadly as well, is highlighting where there are gaps. So at the minute, the team's focus in the next three months is to do what they've said they will in this report and then, cause, and then to progress that work to feed into the 10-year plan. If council wants us to do all of the things that the current strategies say um, and reactivate all of those, then our ability to do the review um, is really constrained. Is the reporting to those strategies being done through policy or, or being done through the units that, that deliver those activities? I'm thinking of waste environmental solutions and those guys. Well, the, the waste minimisation strategy isn't one of the strategies in the strategic framework. So if, should we use a different example, maybe? Maybe economic... Integrated transport strategy. Well, and again, the statutory ones are slightly different as well. And so that's where what this work is doing. So it's splitting out the ones that are what we're calling the well-being strategies, so the, those those four, and then the integrated transport strategy is a statutory requirement, and I don't think our reporting on that has been as good as it might, but this process is going to make sure that we've got good, robust processes for all of them. And I think give us, the team, and yourselves, three months, and we will get this into a position where we'll work out what needs to be reported on immediately, what we're prepared to, to wait, and what you want us to drive change on, but we just need that three months that's outlined in the work of the team to be in that position. Thanks. I note in part point 25 you do pull those other policies or strategies apart, but I also note that they're not sitting, obviously because you pulled them out, they're not sitting in those workshops either. So I guess is, is there will be a follow-on body of work that goes in after this then once the wellbeing strategy section's done and these ones will then get timetabled? Remember we're doing the 10-year plan as well, and so some of these are directly required in the 10-year plan, so the financial strategy, for example, um, the infrastructure strategy required in the 10-year plan, so yes. I just have a question about one of those strategies that is, isn't mentioned in here, which is the, the parks and recreation strategy, so it's important, I can't remember where it reports to, um, <laughs> but how is that going to be put through this process so it remains important, obviously it's important, how's it going to be put through the process so it doesn't get lost? Oh, I think, yeah. Uh, you are correct, it is, it is an important strategy and we have, um, all eight have had that um, review as uh, Jeanette explained. Um, the, in terms of parts, it's one of, uh, this doesn't, it, it's one of the few strategies that is actually current, <laughs> so um, it was a, it's, it's under less time pressure. However, it's not to say that it's not important. In fact, when we looked at the well-beings, we found that Parks and Rec came into a lot of the well-beings as well, so we can see how it's integrated. Um, that involves a different team on when and how it gets refreshed, but we have certainly shared that information um, with that division. So would it maybe become, I say, it's that sort of subservient to the other strategies in the um, framework that you've got on, I guess we shouldn't prejudge the outcome, yeah, I'm but I'm sure. just making sure that it's in the in the mix. Yeah, it's in the mix, and I think that question that you asked is what we'd tease out in the, in the workshops before we get ahead of ourselves, for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Councillor Houlihan? Thank you. Um, given uh, a previous councillor raised it um, in here, how do we deal with situations or monitor them, I suppose, audit or, or monitor or just keep track of um, the goals, the KPIs for the strategies, for example, with Aratui, which is a very good example, where they had a, a thing in the strategy that it would meet every year for a hui with the creative sector, and that's happened once since 2017. How do we, what process do we have to make sure that those things, those targets in the strategies are actually happening? From the, um, from the review that we did, we have actually gone through those line by line and just done a bit of a, um, a, a summary over what, what activities happened and as Jenny explained, which ones hadn't quite happened. And so your hope, oh, so your, your hope is that with this refresh, things like that won't fall through the cracks again, is that the hope? Uh, that's one of the key goals of this refresh, yes. Thank you. 
Um, uh, something that was raised just before is that I believe you said the current uh, advisory groups and strategies, so our toy strategy, for example, is even though it's being refreshed, it's currently live. Is that correct? Is that what you were saying? Uh, yes, that's correct. Could I ask, if that's the case, why hasn't it met yet in this term? I'll answer that if I can. And we've flagged this a number of times that while the refresh work is going on, we are seeking to do the, the stock take work um, and then come together and get a, a council view on how that refresh will progress, rather than call those various governance groups together when we've got nothing to talk to them about because the team are doing the refresh work. And so if we could just have that th the three months that is scheduled here, get the work done and then look at how council and then how the community would like to oversee those things. So for time frame, is the aim that we can we expect from this then in three months time we'll be able to meet as a group under Creative Dunedin Partnerships for Aratoi Governance? No, you can't expect that. Um, what you can expect is over the next three months we will work as council has agreed um, with staff and with councillors to um, go through the work that's been done to look at the stock take and then work out what the next steps are. What um, ability does the community have to have an input into that over that period? So th the next step in the process is for councillors and staff to go through the stock take and look at where that's landed and decide what we then want to do um, and what you want to, the conversation you want to have with your community. So that might be different for each of the strategies. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I suppose the previous questions just asked are relevant to what I want to ask. I'm thinking of a specific strategy, namely economic development strategy, and we talk about the economic well-being. And we've got three references to it here on pages 31, 32, and 37. So on page, th these are tables, each of three different tables on the three different pages. So page 31, in the middle of that table at the top of the page, we've got economic well-being, economic development strategy, refresh. Uh, in order to achieve uh, strategic alignment, better reporting and monitoring, and a review cycle for strategies to ensure alignment and improved efficiencies throughout which is, sounds great. Now, over the page 32, we've got economic development strategies under wellbeing strategies, and the, here's the audit. And wellbeing research completed, wellbeing concepts drafted, ongoing support for OIC wellbeing group. And then page 37, this is all gonna happen by uh, next week, May 17. Or because, or are we going to have a workshop on that date? Um, because that is the date of the workshop for the economic development strategy, the refresh overview. So, how is all how is all that going to come together on that day? Will there be work done by yourselves in advance, or should we be doing in advance? Oh, sorry. So that's been the work of the team. So that work has been done, and that's been what what we tasked, what was tasked of us a year or so ago, was to do a stock take, look at you know all the work that's been um, outlined here. And then that work has been done, and what we will re will supply to you. We, I mean, we, it could have been attached to this, but I think it would have it was better to, to kind of send it through to you as a, as a kind of um, preview to our workshop series that we'll be having. So that, that's the work of, that's the work that's being done to get us to a, to a point where we can now start to have a really clear conversation of, of exactly the status of each of the strategies. So we've, the team has done that work and so that, that, that's what now triggers um, us to be able to work with council to to understand the work that's being done and the position and the you know that you want to kind of um, 
a, a starting place or a starting position to then develop what you want for, the, for each of those wellbeing strategies. So uh, am I correct in assuming then that you're going to have an assessment of the current economic development strategy that you've reviewed and for us next week and a range of other uh, potential options or thoughts for the future and we're going to workshop that to figure out where we want to go and how we're going to get there. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> I just wanted to pull those three tables and threads together to see that we do have a plan and how that's going to work. That sounds um, very promising. Thank you. It appears we have no more questions. Would someone like to move the resolution? Mandy? Sorry, Councillor Mayhem. Seconded Councillor um, Lefiso. Now, would anyone like to speak to the motion? Mandy, would you like to speak as the mover? Okay. Um, Councillor O'Malley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's good to see this progress to this point. I only put one word of caution in, really. Um, I'm just going back to sort of my RMA training and looking at district plans where the district plan remains operative until the next one is lodged. And I'm looking at how our strategies are being executed at the moment. Um, probably, and, and looking at this um, forward work program, knowing that the four boring strategies aren't in it yet, so as you might want to call them, um, that, that we would want to be considering whether or not how long, how far away the delivery date is and the final completion date and whether or not we want to maybe go back and look at some of these strategies and say actually can we still pull these things out and still keep these operative as we go through this work. I'm very supportive of the work. I think it's a good, it's good, it's, it's needed. Um, it's especially important that Te Tariti get, its, get, its, get into the middle of all these strategies, otherwise we are, we are not giving effect to our obligations there as well. Um, but I just give a, a request really is to say that while this work goes on and it needs to be able to complete itself appropriately, so therefore it needs to be given the amount of time it needs to complete itself without being rushed, we might just want to have a look at some of the strategies and say, is there a few things that we can pull out of the existing strategies that we would bring back into the reporting structures of things like the committees that those strategies are associated with. Thank you. Councillor Gary. Thank you. I just uh, want to acknowledge the considerable amount of work that we requested that staff carry out and that has been carried out and has brought us to this point. Uh, so thank you to Ms. Bikaira, Ms. Huako and team uh, for that work. Um, and I just was reflecting on some of the questions and responses and thinking uh, as an example that the Aratoi strategy is still in place and we heard today uh, that the work continues, the strategy is still being uh, given effect by the work that staff are carrying out while the refresh goes on. So uh, I don't have concerns in that regard. Um, but look forward to the culmination of this work and our workshopping programme. I think it's going to be really interesting and uh, very engaging, and I know the community uh, will look forward to that too. Councillor Hurlihan. Thank you. <coughs> yes, I really appreciate the fact that we're doing these, ref you know, this refresh. I think it was needed, and I think it's probably actually quite appropriate that Deputy Mayor Barker gets congratulated for her persistence in asking again and again for the strategies to be reviewed. And this paper and this report is a result of that. And thank you for that. Um, it was needed to do, and I know things. You know, it's a large organisation, things can fall down at times and it's the way you get back up that makes the difference and that's what we're doing is getting back up. Um, so that's great. But um, for the Aratui strategy, particularly for the only to have been one hui in the last seven or eight years, when in that the strategy it clearly states they should have been yearly, is something that was raised by some of the um, creative community at a... Um, a an arts meeting recently that I was at and I was embarrassed by that. I thought, oh my goodness. And um, as a person who's really keen on the arts, and I'm, I'm very aware of the issues that we've got at the moment around a theatre and our professional 
um, theatre people, many of them leaving our city, and the um, concerns there are around the live music is that we desperately need to be on top of this now. And um, I, I know there's divided views in the room and certainly um, some of the things have been noted, but uh, I think it seems a shame that we're not having that um, Creative Dunedin Partnership meetings during this refresh when it was clearly stated that the, um, the Aratui strategy currently is live, even though they're going through a refresh, they are live, and I know they're doing work on the refresh, but I think it's important we hear those community voices. So, yeah, I'll look forward to seeing the strategy when it comes, and I hope that we can solve some of the problems that are facing our sector. Councillor Wiley. Um, thank you. Um, firstly, I acknowledge that this report is for noting um, and that is important to me at this stage that we are noting the report um, so I will be supporting it on that basis um, what I I am a little frustrated uh, through the questions I asked uh, and acknowledge the process that's taking place um, knowing that the economic development strategy needs to be refreshed I also understand that there's two pieces of work here that are going to be going, in my mind, essentially in the same direction. Uh, and I think there could be some really good overlap as we go with economic development um, strategy and what it looks like for 2023-33, or whatever we may call it. And I think th I also take on Ms. Waikara's um, comments around consultation overload with the community and I think that is very real as well but I will be really pushing the community to have their engagement in August and September because I think that is really important to make these strategies and documents very uh, future focused and um, very community positive because again we do need the community to be part of this journey. Thank you. I'll just have my way saving the um I've just noticed you put your hand up, Marie, so I'll just say um, being the, the, the councillor that you guys call councillor strategy because of my obsession with strategy, but your strategy should be our number one priority is governance and this is how we make sure that we're achieving the vision. And the vision at the moment is one of the world's great small cities and we as a council do need to consider about whether we consider that to be the, the most exciting and aspirational vision. I had a vision myself um, of New Zealand's most livable city so we all have different things that we would like from this council to deliver and I think we really need to get on, on top of our aspirations and our visioning and do that along with our community. The um, strategic refresh is actually going to be a roadmap into the long term plan and the long term plan is the budgetary stuff but it's also the, the how we get stuff done so we're working on the why now and then we want to be able to work on that how through the long term plan so that's why we're getting asked for three months and then this work will and the work plan will come forward so I urge your councillors to get really involved maybe find some strategies or visions that you really like the look of from other councils not that we're going to steal all their ideas but maybe that might be helpful in, in, in seeing this process because we need to make sure we have strong input strong control into this and also we need to make sure that when we're getting into the process that we are very clear about the implementation. When I looked at some of these old strategies, some of them were plans to make plans. It's like, oh, we've got the plan here and then we're going to do the, we're going to decide on some measures and all that kind of stuff. And that just drives me nutty because if we want to have these strategies in place, we need to make sure that we've got clear monitoring. I hear um, councillors concerns and frustrations around where some of the strategies have, have languished in the past and it's obvious that we haven't had the, the clear focus on the implementation and the monitoring and the governance of those, whether we use advisory groups etc. Um, we also absolutely need to carry our, the aspirations of our community with us and have community ownership of those strategies as well. And when we think about the arts community, they felt like they owned that strategy. There was a city transformation group or whatever they were called that got into um, um, got into helping make that strategy like with the economic development I know there were lots and lots of meetings with businesses everyone that was involved and they really do 
I hope, carry a lot of those um, strategies in their hearts and it's up to us to make sure that we, uh, we are delivering on them. I think um, in a workshop earlier I asked about the, one, of the, one of the things that the economic development strategy was supposed to be delivering, which was important for the city, so we need to make sure that we have strong guidance um, and governance on those. Uh, yeah, I know I, could, know I could talk about strategy for ages, but I'm not going to. Uh, if no one else wants to speak, I will hand it over to Councillor Mayhem for her right... Oh, you want to speak? Sorry, Marie, sorry. <laughs> Uh, tēnā koe, Madam Chair. Um, I would just like to add to the comments that um, acknowledge the staff again uh, for uh, doing uh, as we asked um, quite a long time ago. So I think that, um, from what I understand, um, uh, the mana hautu and um, Ms Huako and her team have been working on this breathing and, and sleeping and eating this, um, this mahi. Uh, for the last uh, maybe 18 months. So I just want to acknowledge that, the blood, sweat and tears, and also acknowledge that while we um, may be divided around this table as to how it should happen and what should, should happen, also the community is uh, divided or have different view, a range of views. So I think uh, while we're in a hurry to, to um, you know, uh, deliver this whole <coughs> huge, huge piece of work, We've also got to be patient and wise, and I just want to <coughs> acknowledge that this is all about relationships, um, as, as staff have said, and I uh, just want to acknowledge um, the role of the CEO in, in <laughs> managing all these relationships with governors and with staff, with her team, and also the patience and endless aroha that mana whenua have uh, to sit alongside us and to guide us and to wait for us to get our act together as Tauiwi. Kia ora. Councillor Mayhem, your right of reply. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Barker. Uh, nā mihi, mahi, wonderful Ms Wakara and Ms Huako. Um, I too echo what Marie Lafiso has said. Thank you, Luke, Councillor. Um, in regard to patience and wisdom, um, what I would like to see is that we honour Te Tiriti and that we finally start implementing our vision for Dunedin as one of our great small cities. I'd like to see the well-beings, economic, environmental, cultural and social well-being for the best community outcomes, delivery, guidance and governance, as Deputy Mayor Barker said, um, and echoing what Councillor Wiley said, community engagement. I think um, we do need to do this well and with patience. Kia ora. Thank you. I'm going to put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Anyone against? That is carried. Now we'll move to items for consideration by the Chair and I I don't think we have any, so we shall move on to exclude the public. So I move that the committee, pursuant to the provisions of the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987, exclude the public from the following part of the proceedings of this meeting and the reasons outlined in the agenda. Councillor Walker has seconded. I'm now going to put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Anyone against? That is carried. Thank you. I will adjourn for five minutes while we move into non-public. So we'll be back.